In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Bahamas, this is NB12 broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Here's what's making news tonight. The country surpasses 20 murders this year. The police commissioner worried about the public losing confidence in the force. A Carifta track athlete arrested just days before the games, plus a new base for Opat. Those stories and much more on the way, and the Kia DeVoe and NB12 starts right now. Thanks again for joining us here at NB12. A yellow elder man was gunned down outside a Chinese restaurant last night, just two weeks after celebrating his 38th birthday. It was an emotional scene on Blue Hill Road as officers tried to console his grieving loved ones. Police are now searching for the suspect who reportedly fled into the yellow elder gardens area. Bonnie Toot has the details. Screams pierced the night as yet another family mourned the death of another murder victim. Police say a 38-year-old man was shot in the head at around 8 last night, just after he picked up his takeout order from a Chinese restaurant on Blue Hill Road. This male had gone into the establishment where he purchased some food and returned to his vehicle when he was accosted by a lone male who produced a handgun and discharged several shots into this direction, causing, we believe, these fatal wounds. Police have identified the victim as Sherwin Roberts Halbert of Derby Road, Yellow Elder Gardens. He was killed less than three weeks after his 38th birthday. Police officers tried in vain to console Halbert's loved ones as his body was placed in a black body bag and lifted into a black hearse. Roll says when officers arrived on the scene, Halbert's body was slumped over in the driver's seat of this black Honda Accord. It was parked just in front of the restaurant. He was suffering from apparent gunshot wound to the head. EMS was summoned to the scene where they examined him and pronounced him lifeless. Police say the alleged shooter ran across Blue Hill Road, then onto Celery Drive, where I am now, before running into the Yellow Elder Gardens area. He's believed to be about five feet six inches tall and was wearing a white T-shirt at the time. So we appeal to members of the public who may have information that can help us to solve this latest uh, homicide to give us a, a call. So we always concerned with with uh, murders and shootings, and uh, you know we hope that persons would learn to settle their dispute in a, in a more sensible way. This latest incident brings the country's murder count for the year to 21. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonig Toot. Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade is acknowledging that some members of the public may have lost faith in the police force. He said recent claims of police brutality and abuse have blackened the eye of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. But Greenslade said he is working hard to repair the force's tarnished reputation. Because despite the best intention on, on my part, despite the best intention on the part of my minister, my permanent secretary, and all of us in leadership who wish the best for this country, whenever those things happen, uh, we get a black eye. And when, you, when, you, um, when your public loses confidence in you, then of course you're on very, very shaky ground. So we have a lot to work to do um, going forward uh, to try to right some of, some of these things. Many Bahamians were outraged after the deaths of 20-year-old Aaron Roll and 35-year-old Jamie Smith while in police custody last month. Pathologists reveal that Roll died from a ruptured intestine caused by blunt force trauma at Southern Police Station. 
During the ongoing inquest into his death, police admitted to hitting Roll in order to restrain him. Smith died of asphyxiation at the Central Detective Unit. An inquiry into his death is set for March 26th. While he stayed clear of commenting on the specifics of the inquest, Greenslade said those incidents, as well as other reports of police brutality, severely hurt the force. And he says he is following the cases very closely. So I was very pleased to read the papers this morning and form uh, some appreciation of just like you as to what's happening in the courts now with some of the outstanding matters, both criminally and the ones that are being heard uh, as a result of the coroner's inquest that is ongoing. And for me that's quite refreshing. That is my position. It's always been my position. It's a vibrant democracy and we must allow the rule of law uh, to take precedent. What is, oh, what is a the prominence. According to the commissioner, the force makes a huge effort to prevent police brutality, including training and sensitizing officers, investing a lot of money in seminars and clearly outlining policies and procedures. He says there are also strict guidelines regarding the treatment of prisoners in custody to ensure officers remain professional. And if they're not, officers are not protected. Greenslade added that officers have been arrested for various offenses this year. You'll hear about uh, a document known as a detention record, an arrest and detention record. That is for the protection of officers and for the citizens. And if the officers get it right and you refer to one of those records, then the record should be in order. If he didn't get it right and it's not in order, well, the chips must fall where they may. That's just the way it is. After the custody death, several groups were formed to protest police brutality. Greenslade said he encourages members of the public to keep the police force accountable, but said they should not rush to judgment. He asked Bahamians not to punish an entire law enforcement agency for the wrongdoings of a few. When you take the overall numbers, the percentage uh, of officers getting into trouble is very small. But the, the thing here is not to be defensive, and we're not. I certainly am not. Um, where we have an incident affecting a member of the public and there is adverse behavior on the part of a police officer. That adverse behavior is not just impacting the person that the officer has dealt with, but that person's entire family. So that person goes home and then there's this multiply effect. Most people that are getting the story is just getting one side of it. They have a right to question. We believe questioning in the democracy is good. That, that is healthy and I encourage that. One of the Bahamas' finest junior athletes and one of the country's best weapons heading into next weekend's Carifta Games has reportedly been released from a Florida jail after spending the night behind bars. 18-year-old Stephen Dirty Newbold was arrested early yesterday morning for allegedly discharging a firearm in public and resisting arrest without violence. The Florida State University sprinter, who was scheduled to represent the Bahamas for a fourth straight year at the Carifta Games, was one of two track stars from the school to be detained. Reports coming out of Tallahassee, Florida are that the Bahamian quarter miler was allegedly shooting at another person in the pool area at the Campus Walk Apartments in Tallahassee. Newbold, along with four other men, including another Bahamian quarter miler on this year's Carifta team, Andre Wells, were seen by police in the vicinity of the pool and detained. According to reports, Newbold ran when one of the officers mentioned a gun and was later retrieved by a police dog. The Tallahassee police are not stating whether or not the firearm used in the shooting incident was ever found. Bahamas Association of Athletic Associations President Mike Sands said it is still too soon to say whether Newbold will compete in the games next weekend. Newbold is the Carifta record holder in the under-17 boys 400-meter hurdles, and he's a five-time Carifta medalist. And speaking of the games, despite the bleak financial situation at BEC, electricity will be provided free of charge for next weekend's much-anticipated Carifta Games. This after the Bahamas Electricity Corporation recently joined several other major sponsors for the games. In this next report, BEC Chairman Leslie Miller explains the decision. Here's our Jasmine Bonamy. BEC officials revealing this morning that Carifta officials will not have to bear the brunt of paying an exorbitant electricity bill for the three-day event. In fact, Chairman Leslie Miller says it'll be a gift from the Bahamian people. Miller made the announcement during a press conference held at BEC's Blue Hill Road headquarters this morning. Miller says Carifta officials approached BEC executives asking for their support. That's when it was decided to provide electricity free of charge, says Miller. The anticipated price tag is expected to be in the neighborhood of $60,000. The major contrib contributor to the overall price tag of Carifta 2013 is the high cost of electricity 
to the multi-million dollar Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. The electricity cost for the three-day event is expected to be in the neighborhood of $60,000. BEC has agreed to absorb the entire cost of the electricity consumed at the stadium during this magnificent event. The announcement of the absorption of electricity costs comes weeks after Mueller revealed in the House of Assembly that BEC was hemorrhaging financially. On March 5th in the House of Assembly, he revealed that the Bahamas Electricity Corporation lost nearly $13 million in the first quarter of the fiscal year. When asked how it was possible that BEC could provide free electricity, Mueller responded that the $60,000 price tag was not that major. When you look at the fact that BEC is a multi-million dollar entity with assets totaling almost a billion dollars. Um, $60,000 is not a whole lot of money um, with regard to BEC. Remember now, we are providing electricity and this electricity would be provided at our cost. So obviously um, our direct cost would be cheaper than what would normally be charged to say a commercial entity. So the cost is, an, is, is significant to all of us, but not overly burden some on the efforts that has been placed to enable us to try to bring down the cost of electricity to Bahamian people. For their part, Carifta officials said they were happy BC has decided to help. The Carifta Games begin with an opening ceremony on March 29th and ends on April 1st. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy.